everyone in the YouTube world, my name is Craig, and you already know this guy, this is German. Today's video, you don't even know what this video is about. No. Can you guess? No. It's about that car right there. Oh, yes. Not so much the car as much as it was the customer. You remember this customer? Yeah. Today's video is all about how I got screamed at, like really, really yeah. screamed at. I thought I was going to be <laughs> murdered in, on a test drive by a customer that bought this car. And I'm gonna explain to you why this car is back in our possession after we sold it. Common Audi problems, common customer headaches. Yes. This is German, my name is Craig, let's get going. So hey everyone, welcome to our Flying Wheels YouTube channel. This right here is a 2011 Audi A4. We sold it how long ago? I want to say about six. At least six months ago. We sold ago. it in the summer. Yes. It's now the spring, the following spring. Yeah. We sold this to a customer. Right. Everything was fine, right? It drove well. We went on a test drive. It drove well. Everything checked out well. The customer had agreed that he liked the car and purchased it. And he bought it. They loved it. Yeah. Him and his son. Him and his son bought it. He bought the car and then like February comes and he calls me yelling that he's going to report us to the Better Business Bureau and Google and Facebook and yeah, everything you could think of for review, he's going to report us as a bad review if we don't take care of him. Mm. He didn't even tell me. He actually just threatened me with those at the introduction of the phone call, like yelling at me on the phone. I'm like, sir, calmly, you're, I learned this from you calmly, sir, what's the problem? Just tell me what's wrong first. How can we help you? He's like, you sold me a lemon. I'm like, I, I'm sorry, I don't even remember you. That was, that was probably, Six. how many cars ago? Wait, 70, 80, 100 cars ago? I, don't I'm, I know most people, I remember their faces, I remember their car, but not their names. Right. So I tr now I'm trying to remember the car. I'm like, how long would you buy it? He's like, oh, like three, four months ago, which they always say. Like, oh, I just recently <laughs> bought it. And then I found his paperwork, eight months ago, eight months ago he bought it. Yeah. Eight months ago he bought it. I'm like, well, what's wrong? The engine went. Okay, no problem. Did you buy the warranty? No. <laughs> no. So we offer warranties to everybody. Buy the warranty. It's like 400 bucks. Well worth it. 12 months, 12,000 miles. Covers your engine, covers your transmission. And then I always tell people this. This is how I sell it. I'm one of two people to you. Something goes wrong with the car and you bought the warranty. I'm a great guy. You love me because you bought that warranty. You didn't buy that warranty. I'm not that great of a guy anymore because I said, you buy the warranty? No, I didn't. We should have bought the warranty. It would have covered the car. And then neither of us are in this position where you're making me be the bad guy. Mm -hmm. So that's how I explain it up front. So when there is a problem and they decline the warranty, I say, remember when I said you should have bought that warranty because you're going to make me be the bad guy if you don't buy the warranty? That's what happened. He didn't buy the warranty. So I said, sir, I'm sorry. I, I can't give you a full refund. I didn't do that. And it wasn't like you bought it a week ago or even a month ago, even 30 days ago. You bought it six to eight months ago. I can't give you a full refund. I'll tell you what I can do. I can take it back and give you a credit towards something else. So his mechanic offered him $1,000 for the car. And I said, that's crazy. An engine, even if it needs an engine, worst case scenario, it's probably $3,000, maybe another thousand to put into it. You're $4,000 into that car. It's well worth putting $4,000 into that car because it's worth significantly more than that after the engine. You gotta do that. He said he doesn't want it. He wants a full refund. I said, I can't do that. But I'll tell you what I can do. I'll just deduct how much the engine is and give you that much for the car as a credit towards something else here. So before I even get deeper into the story, this is the Audi, it's a 2011 Audi A4 2OT. When we sold this car, it was a great car. Passes inspection, runs amazing. Look how clean it is. I mean, this is how they returned it. And even after owning, it's still a really, really clean car, 120,000 miles. Good tires, great body. And this is a lot of car for the buck. It was like, I don't know, $8,500. So the guy told me, that his son had to continuously put oil in it. The problem is there's no dipstick on these cars. How did he even know to add oil? Which makes me think maybe he put too much oil in it. Did he overfill it? Because too much oil is just as bad as not enough oil. So this kid could have done something wrong with this car. So I have my friend here, certified Volkswagen master technician. Yes? Yes. Doesn't want me on camera. Doesn't want, he, doesn't want his name, so let's call him Stove. Stove knows quite a bit about two OTs, can I say? Yes. Okay. If you don't mind, start the car, give me your professional opinion. I'm not holding you anything, I just want to know what you think. Pop the hood for me. Go ahead.
That sounds awful. Sounds like there's no compression. Yeah, there's no compression. So the time and chain tension is failing these vehicles. And uh, so it's a failed, failed time and chain tensioner and it causes uh, internal engine damage. So Interference engine. Interference engine, so it's any new valves. But that was a minimal. timing belt problem. Why timing chain is that an issue? Like timing why chain. would the timing chain snap? Why wouldn't it? So the timing chain isn't snap, it's just, it's out of time. Out of time. So the timing chain tension that fails doesn't hold enough tension on the timing chain. So it's the tensioner that it. fails, not the chain. Right. And then the chain, what, falls off the tensioner? The chain would fall then off the gears that run the engine. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. All right. That makes a lot of sense. Now, can you see this coming? Is this something like I could have seen this happening? No. It just happens. Unless the check engine light came on previously. Right. Okay. And you can't have like some telltale like if the check engine light comes on and you have a certain fault, it's kind of like a, head, a heads up. All right. Or you can go in and actually check um, what's called like measure value blocks and mm -hmm. you can check to see if the timing chain is about to become out of Really? Time. But that's like a tech thing. Yes. That's not something you can do with just a regular OBD scanner. No. All right. All right. I'm glad to know that I couldn't have seen this coming because I got sworn at and yelled at because it was my fault. Thank you for that. But warranty or not, I want to take care of all of my customers. I want to make sure everybody is happy. I don't care that he's going to leave bad reviews. Whatever. Leave the bad reviews. Only unhappy people leave bad reviews anyway. I can sell 100 cars to 100 people. 99 happy customers, I'll never hear from them again because a happy customer is a quiet customer. One bad customer, their mother, their father, their sister, their cousin, their friend, and themselves are going to leave bad reviews on everything you could think of. And probably not even tell the truth in the review. Anyway, what he offered was for me to return the car. He wants a full refund, 100% refund. After driving it for six months, putting 13,000, 14,000 miles, whatever it is on it, he wants a 100% refund because it's my fault that the engine blew up on his Audi. Well, he showed up and he looked at this Trailblazer. It's the cheapest car I have on the lot. I haven't touched that thing in four months. It's been sitting in the back corner because it's a cheap car. I hate cheap cars. If you've seen all my videos, you know I hate cheap cars. I just like stuff that makes me smile. But anyway, I offered the Trailblazer. I said, you know what? I own it for 1500 bucks. If you want it for 1500 bucks, you can have it. I don't even care, just get it out of here. Well, the battery was dead and the tire was flat or something. I don't know. He lost his mind. He started freaking out. Honestly, I thought he was, I thought I was gonna have to call the police. He was freaking out so terribly. So after he calmed down, I tried to rectify the situation again. In hindsight, I should have just said, you know what, sir, it's just leave. I don't need your business, just go. You can leave as many bad reviews as you want. I should have just let him go, but that's not the kind of person I am. I like to take care of people. I like to finish the situation, close the case in other words. So I went to the auction. I said, you know what? Give me a week. Let me go to the auction. Let me find you something. I'll find you a nice Honda or a Toyota, something that's not a lot of work. An Audi really isn't the best choice for a kid. Let's get him something reliable. Let's get him something cheap and easy to maintain. I'll go look for a Honda Accord and I'll find one and I'll give it to you for whatever I pay for it. And that's how I'll take care of this situation for you. If you want, I can do that. So I'll buy you a new car, give it to you at my cost. Whatever I pay for it, you can have it. And I'll also give you a credit for the Audi, minus the cost of the engine. And I'll just, I'll just assume it. I'll take care of it. Here is the Accord that we purchased last night for the customer that screamed at me in the parking lot. But what I love is how dull this, this trunk is. Wait until you see it when German is finished with it. We already detailed the inside. This is gonna be a good one. Kind of wish I wasn't selling it at cost. Because this will this will be a fifty-five hundred dollar car finished at tax season with brand new tires. I knew it was gonna come out like this. Sadly, we have to basically give this thing away before after. Anyway, 
Anyway, that's what I did. There's the car. I sold him the Honda Accord. Did I? Now here's the next part. We do title work in our own state. We do it for the customer. We did it for him on this car. He doesn't believe me that that's how it works in our state. We're licensed. We do this all day, every single day. He doesn't believe us that we keep the title and mail it in the state form. So he demanded with German here, because I wasn't here, demanded German that he take the title. German calls me and says, Craig, he won't leave without the title. I said, you know what? Fine, make him sign that he's taking the title. Let him take it. And then he'll come back Monday and tell us he was wrong. Monday he comes, doesn't apologize, doesn't admit he's wrong, just says, you have to submit the title for me. Yeah, no kidding. I know, that's what we have to do. Thank you for telling me how to do my job. The other thing I forgot to mention, with this Honda Accord that he bought for our cost, German offered him a warranty. Now he has this car that he should have bought the warranty on, declined, then he wants me to take care of it for him. Then I give him a car at cost, make zero money on it, and offer him a warranty at cost, and he still declines it. He declines the next warranty, knowing that he should have bought the warranty originally. I don't care about the money on the warranty, but maybe he's vindicated because I took care of him for free. Like, why would you buy a warranty if I'm taking care of you, right? Now he's just gonna think, okay, well, why did I buy a warranty on the Honda? He just did this one for free, and he sold me this at cost. But that's pretty much how the world is right now. We are in a screwy, screwy time where no one can take responsibility for themselves. No one can take responsibility for their actions. Is it my fault that this engine died? Absolutely not. It is not. That is an Audi problem. That is a warranty problem, actually, and it just went over the warranty. In everyone's world, it's everyone else's fault. It's never their own fault. is looking for someone else to blame instead of taking responsibility for their own actions. That's what's wrong with the world today. So today's lesson, take care of your customers, number one, whatever. They can walk all over me, but I know in the long run, I did the right thing. Number two, don't be yelling at other people. Treat people as you would want to be treated. Just like my last video. I already said that once before. Anyway, thanks for watching. I hope it was entertaining. This one wasn't for me. This is how the business goes though. It's not always glorious. It's not always CTSVs and Audi R8s. It's a lot of headaches that come with this job too. And the headaches are, you know, whatever, outweighed by the good, but they're there. So anyway, thanks a lot. Make sure to subscribe down below. If it was at all entertaining, give me a thumbs up right there somewhere and I'll see you all later. Adios.